delivered by Papa John. I know, Papa John, we're getting free pizza. I can't wait. I'm hungry. I can't yeah. believe. What time is there now? Uh, we got pizza o'clock. Pizza o'clock. Right. Papa John, we love it. I cannot wait to get some. Pizza for breakfast is the best. Yeah. See, I, I'm still on. Uh, what? The Aaron Rodgers was just incredible just now really? on our show. Yes. That was so fun. Tell me why. Yes. A I, different side of Aaron Rodgers. He likes side movies. That, he loves, he's pop culture whiz. He's right up our show's alley. That was incredible. Can I be transparent for a second? Always. When I played against these guys, Tony Gonzalez, Aaron Rodgers, you know, these guys were the enemies. And I walked in, I trying to make myself believe that I hated these individuals. I would have never thought in a thousand years I'd be sitting at a table, giddy, like a little child, mm -hmm. with these superstars sitting right next to us. It's an amazing experience. No, really Thank cool. you to you guys. You guys are legends. Yeah. And this is an amazing show. Yeah. <laughs> GMFB, the best show in the world. Thank you. The GOAT. I don't think it's good news for the, the Vikings fans in the room, but I like when he was saying, you know, I'm going to let Brady set the bar, 43, 44-year-old. I ain't going and anywhere. I'm going to chase him. I, how do you guys feel about that? Rogers? And... Okay, they're like, bring it. <laughs> Careful what you wish for, my friends. <laughs> We're live in Minneapolis. This is the NFL experience. If you guys are here, come see us. We'll be here Friday. We will be here on Monday as well, recapping all the action from the Super Bowl uh, between the Eagles and the Patriots. We have reporters with both teams will be checking in with, and we have more amazing guests. Take a look at oh. so We've got Mark Ingram, Angry Run Superstar, Hall of Famer <laughs> Damian Tomlinson, Vernon Davis, great friend of the show, always bringing the energy, and we cannot wait to talk to Luke Keekley this hour as well. You can tweet the show at hashtag GMFB. I feel so short, you guys. I decided to go away from the pillow for a second. Wow. Now I'm like, <laughs> I can't even see over Peter's coffee because you read the lead block. Oh, Chef Cat, come on, you got it. <laughs> lead block. Lead block. Lead lead block. block. <laughs> Here we go. We got some storylines. We'll see whether or not you guys believe them in a nice little edition here of Believe, Believe, believe It or Not. not. Yeah. Hey. First one up, <laughs> Tom Brady, guys. I'm just going to sit like this. Tom Brady reached the Super Bowl seven previous times in his career. All seven games were decided by less than one touchdown. So believe it or not, Super Bowl 52 will be the same sort of a deal. It is every year, like you said. I mean, we're, we're going back to the Rams and the Panthers and Vinatieri. So, absolutely, I think it is. And we talked a lot about the kickers in this game. And sometimes during the regular season, I get mocked by my, my friends here about talking kicker. A little, a little too much kicker talk out of you. There's a little much. I get it. But uh, Justin Tucker is an opera singer. I like it. The fact is... <laughs> It'll come down to that, though. Kickers put rings on yeah. fingers. They put people yeah. in the Hall of Fame. Tom Brady without a good kicker would not be the Tom Brady we talk about today. I bring it up because I think kickers are going to play a huge role. Mm. It will be close. And it's going to be Goskowski or Elliott, both from Memphis, deciding this game. Nobody wants to see a blowout in the Super Bowl. We invest so much time into this game. We have all this buildup. When you see the, the Seahawks blow out the Broncos in New York, that's not fun for the fans of other teams. Right. I will say this, though. If the Patriots get up early, and they never score in the first quarter in Super Bowl, if right. they get up early on this one, it can get out of hand. I don't know if Nick Foles in that offense has the comeback power okay. that maybe some of these other teams around the league do. I'll say this. If the Eagles get up early, it could get out of hand. Really? Seen the Eagles run. strike first. You were talking about last week when we were in New York about the Eagles and how they strike first and they go deep in that first drive. They're going to try to take their shot. This is a heavyweight belt. So they're going to body bow, body bow, and then try to go for the jaw to set these guys on their heels. So, yeah, this is going to be a game that's decided. What I love about this, in baseball, if somebody gets up by too much runs, too many runs, you walk away. In basketball, teams up by 20 or 30, you turn the game off. In football, in the Super Bowl, you're watching the Patriots. It could be down by 17 in the third quarter. You're going to keep your eyes glued to the screen. This is going to be a close game. It's going to be crazily close. Both teams have top five offenses, top five defenses as well. It's going to be a close one. Yeah. If the Patriots win on Sunday, guys, capturing their sixth title in 17 years, you could argue that they are kind of, kind of crazy to say, but not really if you really think about it, the greatest dynasty in sports history. Believe that or not so much. Oh. Oof, this Hard is to tough. argue. This is tough because here at this table – there's something that we love <laughs> almost as much as the NFL, and that so is 90s NBA, baby. <laughs> the 90s NBA shaped who I am as a man, and there is a team that stole our hearts and still does, and that's the Bulls in the mid-90s. Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, Steve Kerr, Phil Jackson. And that's what everybody's chasing, right? Yeah. When Kobe was placing, pl playing, he was chasing Jordan. LeBron now chasing Jordan. Tom Brady chasing Jordan. So to say that that is the greatest dynasty, okay. you're competing with – the Bulls. Yeah. And, and for me, that is the GOAT, for real. You consider salary cap and roster turnover. 
what the end to do that it's not made to have a team that's so dominant correct so to me they are the best sports dynasty because the nba was made for your pippins and jordan but think about this though out of all the legends that played in the patriot uniform you got some patriot hall of famers that will go down to history will them against works for his network bunch of defensive players offensive players you're going to have guys that are going to go down the hall of fame Name some guys from that Bulls team behind, besides Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen mm -hmm. that were superstars and might go down the Hall of Fame. Luke Bay. Longley? Hello. <laughs> okay, nailed it. You making a Luke Longley argument? <laughs> you know Chicago. You know. I'll be quick with it. Tony Kukoc, Croatian sensation. <laughs> Croatian sensation. <True. laughs> lefty. He was a lefty, too. <laughs> a lefty like you, Kay. That was good. Uh, I think it is the greatest dynasty yeah. in professional sports. I'm not going to say the UConn women or, or some of the other teams right. in college, UCLA, but in professional sports, for what they've done over this stretch of time to still be the best with all of the comp competition out there, with an Aaron Rodgers on the field, yeah. with a Ben Roethlisberger every year, they still find a way to be the best with such parity in the league. They're still number one. It's the greatest dynasty I've ever seen yeah. in my life. And I don't even think it's, it's the Super Bowl rings. It's the years between them in football. Like you mentioned, Kay, the free agency. Also getting hit, getting injured. It's a wrap. Here's the deal. We're very close to Canada, so I have to shout out to the Montreal Canadiens, who had an incredible dynasty. Isn't that Canadian? Yeah. There's a lot of uh, fans from Boston here, obviously, what Bill Russell did back in the True. day. fact is, I think the greatest dynasty we have seen is 14 major championships in 11 years by Eldrick Tiger oh. Woods. Now, yeah. here's the deal. Tom Brady's going against 31 other teams. Tiger tees it up against dozens and dozens and dozens of golfers in the hardest sport to play in the world, golf. Good morning, golf. It is Tiger Woods. <laughs> Didn't end terribly well. It's still ending, I think, but 14 and 11 years, the greatest I've ever seen. Yeah. Look, you guys can tweet good your one. answers, by the way, at hashtag GMFB. Let's get to the nitty-gritty here, guys. The real one I want to talk about. Um, we all know the late, great Prince was a Minneapolis native, so believe it or not, I'm not even going to ask you, Nate, because your opinion on this halftime show does not even matter to me anymore. <laughs> He will, Justin will cover a Prince song in the halftime show. Believe it, believe it or not, Drake. I believe he has to. I believe he has to. This has got to be it. We're talking Paisley Park. We're talking Morris Day in the time. We're talking Power Generation. Yeah. And we're talking about Minnesota. Look, Prince performed at a halftime show once, and it was one of the greatest halftime shows we've ever seen. Justin Timberlake, please give us a little bit of Prince on Sunday. All right. To step up in Minnesota and go into Dearly Beloved Purple Rain, <laughs> Take some cajones. It's been Minnesota, <laughs> and I think he's going to do it. I don't know. I don't know. It is also, didn't Prince also write the song Bye Bye Bye? Is, is, is that considered a song that Justin Timberlake can do? It's like, is that, that, not, is, that is so fetch. I You're trying to make it happen. It's not going to happen. Saturday night, we'll find out. JC says I don't let me down. I want it in sync. <laughs> yes, believe, believe it or not. I see that smile over there. Okay, thank you. Okay, we are live in uh, Minnesota for the Super Bowl the entire week right here at the NFL Experience, having so many guests and amazing reporters, by the way, doing an incredible job giving you everything you need to know to get set for the big game. And right now, let's welcome in Aditi King Kabbalah. She's at the Mall of America this morning. Let's talk a little bit about those Patriots because Nick Foles only has five starts to the season. There's not a ton of tape on this guy for Bill Belichick to lock himself up in a room and break down. But it's been a little scary tape. He's playing from tremendous in the playoffs right now. And in fact, that's what I talked about with safety Jerron Harmon. How do you really prepare for a guy who looks so good the last time he was out, who's playing so well, but who doesn't really have a lot of tape? And he said, well, here's what we've done. We've looked at the Eagles' offense, because ultimately this is about a scheme, this is about a team and what they run. He said, we've looked at what Foles has done in years past to understand his tendencies a little bit. And he said, we've looked a lot at the last two games, because it's almost like it's two different quarterbacks. As you guys surely remember, the Nick Foles that we saw in the divisional round of the playoffs was a little more conservative, a little more careful, a little more risk averse. The Nick Foles that we saw in the championship round, he was taking shots. He was pretty aggressive. The Eagles converted 70% of their third down opportunities. Jerron Harmon said we definitely have a challenge in front of us. He said that our coaches are watching a lot of tape. They're still giving us a lot of tape. He said it's a good thing we've had two weeks to do this. But of course, Kay, you know, nobody prepares more or better than the Patriots. Aditi, one of the most feared men in the league is James Harrison, former Steelers linebacker. And the jersey has changed, but the dominance is still the same. How has he acclimated so quickly with the Pats? 
Okay, Nate, it's really pretty interesting that you say the jersey has changed because yesterday when we walked into media access, the jersey changed so much that it was a size extra small and it had the number 80 on it instead of 92. There's Danny Amendola wearing James Harrison's jersey on top of a lot of layers. And then there's James Harrison wearing Danny Amendola's jersey and nearly cutting off circulation. Now, Harrison clearly has made friends with his teammates right away. Kyle Van Noy told me he fits in because he's got our type of attitude and because he's a clown. Apparently you are indeed allowed to clown around in the Patriots locker room. I talked to Harrison about this and he said, this team fits me. He said, I like the discipline that you have in this locker room. Let's not forget, Nate, there wasn't so much discipline in the Steelers locker room. He said, that's the type of guy I am. But he also said it's a fallacy to say that it's completely easy. This is an entirely new defense and what the Patriots have done is created a few spot situations, and Harrison, of course, has taken advantage of those. Okay, he's played twice as many snaps in three games with the Patriots as he did the entire season with the Steelers, and of course, the Patriots are seeing a net return on that. He's been so productive, and how about that low-key shade by Harrison to his former team how about the discipline, you guys? That's not lost on us or Aditi. Appreciate you, of course, uh, reporting with the Patriots. Tell us if there's any jersey swaps there today. Now, back here in Minneapolis at the NFL Experience, let's take a second to talk about a new collaboration between players and owners to help find solutions to issues that deeply impact our communities. It's called the Social Justice Committee, and it supports improvements in education and economic development in community and police relations and criminal justice reform. So in the coming days, in the coming weeks, right here on NFL Network, even on Good Morning Football, we'll be highlighting how they're listening and how they're learning from each other and community members to help reduce those barriers to opportunity. And it all started with Eagle Safety, Malcolm Jenkins. It's time to reevaluate how we deal with crime, how we deal with punishment. Training in the racial intelligence is something that we need as, as police. The change has to be how you treat 